I'm at beautiful Fashion Fair Mall. Gonna stop by the only store worth coming to here, the Apple Store, to see if they have the brand new MacBook Pro in stock. Hey, Alejandro. Hi, bro. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you, bro. I'm just seeing if you guys got the new MacBooks and stuff. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What's up, dude? Oh, you know, I just want to see if you guys have the new MacBooks and stuff. We do indeed. Yeah? You want to send someone to me when you when you got someone? Because I think do I'm going to just... Do you have an abortion? Of course not. <laughs> uh, which one were you looking for? Uh, just a base model, 14-inch in either, either color. I have it in both. Excellent. Space gray, silver. Let's use silver. I did space gray last time. Uh, 330. Okay. That's what I got. Should, oh. should I leave and come back? Um, You don't have to, but it'll probably be 330. that long. All right. But yeah, I'd probably come back at 330 just because I have a bunch of people checked in right now. All right. No sweat. It's all good. Thank you. All right, and then were we planning on financing this or just purchasing it outright? I'm just gonna pay for it outright today. Okay, yeah, let's see. And then were we wanting any uh, accessories, any additional cables, anything like that, or just oh. the computer? Today? I believe I'm all set with just yeah. the computer, yeah. Sounds good. I still right. have a bunch right. of stuff that works. Gotcha. All right, and then we're just gonna uh, fill out just some of you know, the Apple Care information here, just in case if you ever do have to use it, hopefully not, um, but we'll have our information now that we can uh, search you up. So let's see, if you wouldn't mind entering in the first name, last name, and an email there. Yes. All right, and the total today comes out to $2,448.92. It's gonna be all on card? Yes. Yeah. Did you want a bag with your purchase today? Uh, yeah, if you've got yeah. one. Definitely, yeah, we got one. Send the email there. Um, were you wanting to set up here, or just take it home? I'm good, okay. I'm good, thank you. Go grab your bag, I'll be right back. Right? Thanks. Good to go. All right, Excellent. you're all set. Thank you so much. Of course, have a good one. Here we are, back in my office. We haven't done like an unboxing in my office in a hot bit, minute. Hot minute? Hot minute. This is pretty cool. Uh, here is the new MacBook Pro. Fun fact, I guess these uh, these are made entirely out of recycled paper, including the handles. Uh, that's pretty cool. Weird, because I thought recycling wasn't real, but I guess it is. Just kidding. Recycling is real. It's just very, very limited in its scope. Um, I haven't opened one of these in a while. I remember, it I think the last MacBook I got, it, it still came in plastic. This is my 20, late 2018, 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's also the base model 15 inch. Um, so maybe we'll do some comparisons uh, to see how much of a jump there's been in the last four years. But essentially, I I think the best, the best way to think about this is the perspective of like not buying the first gen of something. Um, last year, the M1 Pro and Max MacBook Pros came out and a lot of people are like, I, I don't buy the first gen of things when the revision happens. And sometimes I'm with you. Sometimes I like to I like to buy the new thing. But in this case, I did wait. Um, and also with, with this last MacBook Pro, I waited for as long as I could uh, on, on the computers with just USB-C ports and, and the butterfly keyboard to like basically the last one, the one that came right after this, they got rid of the butterfly keyboard although they did just have uh, USB-C ports. And, and the headphone jacks on the, on the wrong side, it's on the right side, my headphone cable crosses. They fixed that with a lot of the stuff last year. And, and I, I've been very fortunate to get to use last year's M1 Pro MacBook uh, at work. And I, I have that perspective, but this one, this one I, I could be mine. I, I guess I, if I don't like it, I can still return it, but I'm pretty sure this was mine. Also, yes, not sponsored. I bought this, but uh, sponsored by, you know, editor, uh, you know, if you need media, email me, call me, leave a comment, say I need, I need a video, I need photos, I need to record a podcast, let's do it, let's go. Uh, but 
uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot more plastic. We've got, we've got these pull tabs. That's pretty nice. And, and, you know, there's been some unboxings. There's been some first impressions from folks and, and uh, people who got them early from Apple. Uh, I did spend money on this and, uh, I got the base model. Everybody else, uh, it seemed like everybody who got one early got the max, like the 16 inch maxed out. Uh, I want to see, you know, the computer that everyone's going to buy. Ev all the college students, your mom, you are probably going to buy the base model. It's $2,000, which is still not easy to swallow, you know, with, with the computer, with three years of Apple Care, although you can do Apple Care for $99 every year in perpetuity until you, the computer can't be fixed anymore. Uh, it's $280, so with tax everything out the door, this was like $2,440 in, you know, Fresno taxes. But, uh... Yeah, here's a computer. I, I went silver this time. My last computer, I did I did Space Gray, and uh, I, I did put a D-brand and a bunch of stickers on it. Um, but you know, after a while, I missed I missed the classic silver. I missed my my 2015 MacBook silver, and uh, you know the Space Gray isn't that much darker. But I think I think the silver the silver is the I think that's the color for for this year. Um, you know, this isn't new. You'll, you'll see this everywhere. We got the, we got the stuff. Does it have the stickers? It probably has stickers. If it doesn't have stickers, that, that's kind of a bummer, but, uh, yeah. Are they even silver? No, they're black. That's, that's interesting. You'd think the space gray one would get the black and these ones would get silver, but the Apple logo is still pretty dark on here. So that's, that's nice. And this is weird that it's thick, but there's, there's all there is, is just the, the basic guides and the stickers. And then we got uh, the plug. Now, because I got the base model, it is, I think, what, 60 some odd watts. And basically, if you buy any other more beefy version, it is, uh, it's like 90 watts. But, um, you know, honestly, I've been charging my 15 inch MacBook Pro with the 65 watt charger that I got on Amazon most of the time, and it's fine. Uh, 67 watts. This is also no longer plastic, it's paper. That's, that's pretty sweet. And, and MagSafe, MagSafe is, is, has been back for a year. Um, but the tricky thing is, you know, we lived with only USB-C for so long that yeah, I've got this Thunderbolt dock. That's how I charge it. This will probably go in my backpack, but I, I don't know if, how much it will actually get used day to day because I've switched so much of my life to USB-C, but it is cool. I do, I do appreciate it being back. All right. Um, I've done a video on what I like to do, how I like to set up my Macs. Uh, it's mostly the same, even in Ventura. So uh, check out that video if you wanna see how I recommend setting up a Mac. So let me just set it up really quick and then we can kind of compare it to my four-year-old MacBook and see uh, what I might recommend uh, based on you also having an older MacBook or, or, or switching from Windows. Um, I think basically, probably many people at this point have, have you're settled in. You're either, you're either Mac or you're Windows or you're, you're Mac at home and you gotta use Windows at work and, and you're a little flexible or not too many vice versa, but there are a couple of people at CMac that I work with that they're Windows at home, but we're all Mac at CMac. So I don't know, whatever, that's a tangent. Let's, uh, let's get this set up and let's uh, do some comparisons. Just, just give me one, one second. One debt to society later. Okay, got both of the computers with the exact same Final Cut Pro library. I built it on the old computer. This is actually a modified library and timeline of the last video of the sunset, little vlog, micro vlog I made. Um, but that was 8K 60 frames per second footage from the R5C. Um, it was already converted to ProRes. Uh, because I didn't want to have to deal with RAW. I'm going to give this computer a little bit of a leg up and have ProRes Lite 8K60 fi uh, files in the timeline. They are conformed to the 24 frames of the timeline. So it is going to be re rebuilding frames and um, just the standard Canon Log 2 lookup table. No other color correction beyond that. And what we're going to do is we are going to export an H.264 8K 24 frame per second file. Um, there's no audio, it's just the files. 
Uh, both computers have been freshly booted up. Um, the only thing in, in the older computer, I've got some stuff running in the menu bar. It's the, uh, it's the uh, info stuff, uh, you know, tells you how hot things are getting. Um, I can't remember how to turn that off, but it's going. And then of course, screen recording. But uh, I'm really, really worried about my 15 inch uh, MacBook. It actually, it has another advantage in that it is plugged into power, the MacBook, uh, the new M2 Pro MacBook is going to be running off of battery. Um, and when I opened Final Cut with these 8K files, the fan already started to spin up. I haven't even started exporting anything. Also, nothing is pre-rendered on this timeline. So it wasn't like the background rendering was going. It, it was already kicking up the fans. Uh, but also, yeah, this, this computer is four years old. The battery did get replaced with when I got the butterfly keyboard fixed uh, maybe almost a year ago, not quite a year ago. So it is less than a year old battery, but it is already seeing uh, some, some hits on the battery. Uh, so it, it's charging and it's at about 50%. The new MacBook's battery is at 63%. Um, but let's, let's see how this export goes. So I'm just going to do the default export file. Uh, we're gonna do H.264 uh, file types. I'm not even gonna try to do an H.265 on this computer. It will take hours. And this, this timeline is uh, 39 seconds. It's estimated to be a 1.09 gigabyte file at the end. And we're just gonna open in QuickTime. That's great. Uh, and all of the files, I should also mention, the files live inside the SSD. There's no external stuff going on. That being said, this both of these are only 512 gigabyte drives. And honestly, I mostly work with these SanDisk drives. Uh, this one, it's, it's light gray. I got it at Costco. Um, the dark gray ones that you get anywhere else are also great. Um, the Gen 2 ones are even faster, but for, for this, it seems to be fine. Um, but these files are in the computer, like Zoolander. But uh, these should be, this should be the fastest export time uh, possible. So uh, let's also point the export to go to the desktop. Just right on the desktop. Just right on the desktop. Here we go. And three, two, one, save. Also, I've never had like a two Macs that are like simultaneously like up to date and the universal control like started to overlap. That uh, That's pretty nice to have. I, I have used some universal control with my iPad next to my, my MacBook, my iPad's also from 2018. Uh, I, I've just been, I've just been living, living like, like 2018. You can hear the fan has kicked on on the 20, late 2018. It's an i7, it's the base model. I don't know the other specs. It's, it's 512 gigs of storage. And both of these are 16 gigs of RAM, but um, we're at 18%, we're at 6%. Things are moving, we are, we are currently at three times the speed of export. We were at 21, we were at seven, now we're at 24, we're at eight. So yeah, basically three times the speed of this computer in terms of exporting. Now, exporting is mainly working the CPU on this Intel, because it, it is a CPU and a GPU that are totally separate. It's got the uh, Intel CPU and the AMD GPU, and this is all you know, one system on a chip from Apple, the M2 Pro, um, and exporting really on, on traditional computers with separate CPU and GPU, exporting speeds are handled by the CPU. The GPU is only really handling the in the moment thing. So when the GPU is really important when you've got uh, a whole bunch of clips in your timeline and you've got effects on it and you don't wanna pre-render things, you just wanna watch your computer suffer and try to show it to you, that's the GPU. But in terms of like cranking out a video, you've, you've got it in your timeline and it's time to export it and you gotta get it uploaded because the deadline's coming. The Everybody who got the stuff early in, the embargo came by and you're playing catch up. Uh, that's where the CPU matters. But uh, the GPU 
matters in the in the real time stuff. And that's what people are also seeing. They're seeing 8K footage layered up and and doing boxes and uh, layering crazy blur effects or film emulation. That's the GPU working. Um, wow, we have uh, still still basically three times speed because we were 22% and 66% here. It is quite remarkable how like exactly it is three times the speed, 300% faster CPU four years later, five, four-ish, a little bit, four and some change years later. That said, the fan has kicked on on the M1, M2 Pro, MacBook Pro. It is quieter than the 2018 MacBook Pro. Here's a little sound. And the, in fact, the fan is getting ramping up even higher on the 2018 MacBook. But it's still, it, you know, we did cause this to kick on. Now, we are exporting H.2. Oh, and it's done. I don't know, what was the time on that? I'll put some time on the screen. That's how much time this one took. We'll let this one keep going. We are not using the optimized format. Now we were, we are using the optimized format for the input, that's ProRes. Um, essentially these MacBooks have the like afterburner chip that was the big deal for the Mac Pro um, that accelerated ProRes encoding and decoding. Um, now I know the M1 Max computers are really, are like both ways like encoding and decoding at the same time, it's optimized. Um, I believe on the M M2 Pro, it was, if it's like the M1 Pro, it's just one direction. You're either encoding or you're decoding. You can't really do both at the same time and get that optimization. On this side, there's not really any optimization beyond the Intel chip. And we're about 42%, uh, still, still kicking away at this 8K file. I guess also while we're waiting, um, you know, this is the first device I've owned with mini LED. I've had the standard LED backlit display, um, the mini LED, I don't know. Well, I don't wanna mess up, I don't wanna change anything, but I wanna put something full screen here and see how dark the, the pixels get that aren't in use. Um, I do, you know, all of the iPhones since the iPhone 10 have had an OLED screen where each individual pixel self illuminates. Um, mini LED, there are just smaller LEDs, but it's not exactly one-to-one -one per pixel. Um, I have an OLED TV, I love it. I love the screens on the iPhones. Um, having more contrast, having deeper, darker parts of the screen is very nice. And then of course, it is also an HDR screen, so it also gets brighter, so it, it on the, on the spectrum of brightness compared to this screen, it goes darker and it goes brighter. And lastly, uh, I'm, I'm just impressed that there's so much power in this smaller computer because in the past, you, you kind of had to get the 15 inch MacBook Pro if you really wanted the power or you're, you know, you're really paying for the upgrades to get to the, what, the, the 13 inch versus the 15 inch. But now the 14 inch MacBook Pro you know, I'm, I'm, use, I'm losing a little bit of screen real estate compared to, compared to the 15 inch, but I'm gaining a ton of power and a lot more portability. I've had to lug around a 14 inch MacBook Pro for work and I really, really uh, have enjoyed not needing to carry the 15 inch MacBook Pro because uh, footprint wise, uh, it is, you know, I've almost got these at the same angle, uh, it's almost, two centimeters, almost an inch uh, taller um, and corner to corner wise. Uh, there, there's almost, yeah, a whole inch in the other direction, but because the screen reaches to the edge of the bezel further, I'm, I don't feel like I'm losing that much screen real estate compared to how much corner to corner size I'm shaving off. It's really quite remarkable. Oh, I thought of another thing we can test while the older MacBook is still exporting. The other great thing that came back when the MacBooks got redesigned last year was the return of an SD card reader. And not only that, it's a UHS-2 SD card reader, so it can read these fancy ones with the second layer of pins. Now, 
on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro I use at CMAC, one of the things that kind of annoyed me was I wouldn't always get the the SD card to read on the card reader on the first try. Now that might just be that particular MacBook that I use, but I want to know if I put now this is a pretty well used, well loved uh, SD card. It's 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 got some some uh, not corrosion but some scratches on the pins. So it, it's been used a lot. I get this gets used in my R5C and my C70 all the time, but I want to see if it mounts right away on the new MacBook Pro. I just popped it in and there it is. It came right up. Uh, you know, I know some people didn't really talk about the SD card slot. Like they were just like, yes, I'm happy the SD card slots back, but th that's all they, that's all they said. But it is, you know, a relative, oh, the Intel Mac is done. Uh, I don't know how much time that was. I'll put it, I'll put it on the screen. I'll pull it from the file. Um, and yeah, here it is. Fans are still going on both MacBooks. But it's really cranking on the Intel. I should I, sh I should set up a stereo microphone. I didn't. I just got my shotgun mic. That's all you get today. But um, I I am quite impressed, especially with the short turnaround time of exporting that file. Now uh, both let me crank up the brightness on both computers here. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna hit full screen here. But yes, uh, the the. The mini LED screen does just dip into the dark shades quite nicely. Let me see if I can catch this on camera. So here is the Intel MacBook. And you, you can see there's a little bit of illumination behind the black, behind these uh, white uh, icons here. But over here on the new MacBook Pro, um, there is not nearly as much uh, you know, depth in, in, the, in the black. Now, I, I'm, I'm not really noticing any bleed, but I also have my big YouTube light on. Uh, here, let me, let me turn off. Hey, turn off Kyle's YouTube light. Yeah, I'm not really noticing any, any light bleed, whereas I actually experienced some light bleed on this older uh, Mac, uh, just kind of in the bezel. Here, was it this one? Maybe it was my 2015 one. Maybe it wasn't this one. Maybe this one's, the screen has been fine. The keyboard, I did have to have the keyboard worked on uh, once. Also, the headphone ports on the correct side, that's quite nice, because um, most of my headphones, my over-the-ear cans, the the cable comes out of my left ear can, and I want it to go into the my left side or the right side of the computer, I don't know, computer stage, stage right uh, of, the, of the computer side there. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. That's a really small thing. The keyboard still feels great. Uh, the return of scissor switch keyboards is, is so nice. And um, the, you know, I, I didn't mind the touch bar. I thought the touch bar was, was perfectly fine. Um, I, I, I got used to it and there were tools that helped me optimize using the touch bar, making it more versatile. So it didn't, it didn't really like grind my gears as much as it did for some other people. But it is nice to have the physical keys. They're always mapped. I always know where to turn up volume and turn up screen brightness or turn down screen brightness if I needed to. I don't have the new Wi-Fi 6E. I think I've just got like Wi-Fi in. It's, it's plenty fast. I think, yeah, the only other thing that would be really cool is we've got some really fun tech at CMAC and having a 10 gigabit Ethernet port would be nice, but I like I get it. I can get a USB-C one or Thunderbolt one to plug in. It would be another dongle I've got to carry around, but you know, that's that's where that is. HDMI 2.1, but being able to do 8K over HDMI or or even 4K 60, I think, over HDMI is 2.1 will be quite cool, especially, you know, utilizing my fancy new cameras and being able to push that much data through through HDMI. Seems pretty cool. I, I don't have any displays that can do 8K yet, but maybe eventually, and this, this computer will be ready for it because I do have a camera that can record 8K 60. So that's pretty nice. So who is this computer for? The weird thing is, is I felt like almost everybody, I felt like the only person who did not upgrade to an M1 Pro, M1 Max MacBook. I was the only one holding out doing the, I don't, don't buy a first gen thing. But if somehow you are like me 
and you're still, your primary MacBook, or even just computer in general, is an Intel-based computer. And, and you made it this far. This is a huge jump, three times speed, almost consistently three times speed on that whole export running off of battery. This being, you know, not the top of the line, but being, being the, the model that most people buy, the baseline MacBook. I think if you still have an Intel Mac and you do heavy duty stuff, this M2 MacBook is a good get. People are getting close, other, the competitors are getting close, but I still think Apple makes the best laptops. And, and you know, they've set that margin even further with these latest chips. That said, I've spent a lot of time with the M1 Pro. Um, it also, it's not the base model, it's the one just above the base model um, without any chip binning. Um, so the 10 core uh, processor um, or 10 core GPU, I forget, it's numbers. Uh, that is still a great computer. And I think it's still in stock a lot of places and it's probably currently discounted. I'm sure if you went into your local Best Buy, maybe even the Apple store, your local Apple store, if it's like this week, if you're, if you're watching this right as I release it and as these new MacBooks come out, I think if you can find a good deal on an M1 Pro, and you've already, you've obviously already waited this long. You haven't let, you haven't let FOMO get to you or, or the Intel computer is still doing what you need it to do. The M1 Pro is good, even especially considering it's a first gen, pro, like, you know, first gen redesign. They really nailed it. Uh, Apple hit a home run with the M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is just like the next little bump. This is just a bump on a lot of things, the processor, the GPU, the HDMI, the Wi-Fi. Um, I didn't even test the speakers. Maybe the speakers are even tuned just a little bit nicer than last year's, possibly. Uh, well, if you want me to do that test, leave me a comment. So it's hard, it's hard to recommend. I don't know, I might, if I wanna save some money, maybe I will return this and pick up an M1 Pro because I didn't have any issues with the M1 Pro, I've been using at work. You know, I, I do run into issues with this computer. This computer basically sits on a desk because the battery's kind of not that great, and it's it's bigger and heavier. I think with this computer, I won't try to compromise my travel with an iPad. I'll travel with this. So that's where it is. If you've still got, you know, a 28 late 2018 or earlier Intel MacBook, and you're feeling like the battery's toast or it's not moving as quickly as I want it to. This is great, but so is the M1 Pro. So if you can find an M1 Pro on sale, might be the way to go. If you're watching this like six months later, or a year later, and the M1 Pro is all that's left, it's great. It's fantastic. I hope you're able to find it a little bit cheaper than list price. If you know some students, or you are a student, there's always this Apple student discount, um, or, or if you work in the military, or certain certain corporations have corporate discounts. I just bought this one right out. I, I walked right into the Apple store. I bought the base 14 Pro because I think that's what most people are going to buy. And I think it's great. But I also think the M1 Pro is great. Weird times we live in where just, you know, we're flying off at the seat of our pants for, for new technology. Um, even if it doesn't seem exciting, you know, people don't think like phone stuff is as exciting. People are using things for longer. Don't have to buy a phone every year. Don't have to buy an iPad every other year. Don't have to buy a Mac until like every four years. Um, it's a, which is great for consumers. If your stuff can last, I'm a big proponent of only buy it when you need it. But I was starting to need it on the MacBook side. I'm gonna hang on to this MacBook because it's the last Intel computer that I've had and it is basically the second to last Intel Mac. And I think that uh, there may be some things, there might be some plugins, there might be some apps that don't run well, even though there is the Rosetta stuff to translate it over. I'm gonna hang on to this just in case. And I think I'm gonna hang on to this computer. I gotta talk to Gilbert. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll uh, podcast about it. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I, I helped you either 
point you in the right direction of the computer that you need or helped you realize you don't need a new computer and you can save your money. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Peace.